This is the beginning version of my STM32 F411 drone that I am building on a 450 frame and my test environment. I'm just going to turn it on and then, then uh, cut the noise to talk about the project. Okay, that's uh, better. I detached the audio and I'm recording on the clip. In the rest of this video, I'm going to uh, discuss all of the components I've soldered together uh, on the drone spreadboard and um, their interface to my external Raspberry Pi's displays. I am uh, developing the flight controller code in uh, C++ on an STM32 F411 and the display code in the uh, Raspberry Pi uh, in Python 3. There is no external configuration tool required as all setup is being built into the project code. I will demo um, a, a few functions using the drone and the displays and uh, discuss my plans to incorporate uh, robotic functions. Just a word of caution, I have no idea how successful I will be with the rest of this project, but hope to produce uh, additional videos as I progress. In order to uh, talk about the drone's uh, components, I moved the battery uh, and the top plate of the frame to the side. I unscrewed the uh, breadboard and raised it so it can be seen. The uh, components um, on the breadboard are soldered together uh, with wire connectors. Uh, it's nothing fancy. Um, I also uh, put a, a 3D uh, uh, printed uh, plastic sheet covering the metal frame uh, because I was uh, concerned about uh, you know the, any of the pins touching the metal frame and causing shorts. I'm going to be uh, talking about the components on the breadboard. Um, all of these components, uh, including the interface to the Raspberry Pi, have been uh, documented in previous videos. Uh, uh, some have sample code. And uh, what I'm going to do is just uh, reference them on the bottom of the video as I go through uh, the description of the components. Um, the main processor that has the uh, flight controller and um, uh, some setup code is, is this. This is the STM32F411. It's a very fast processor. Uh, However, in my test environment, I, I, I don't want to be too far away from the drone uh, so that I can get the data that I need to be able to improve uh, the performance of what I'm doing. And uh, this does not have a Wi-Fi capability. So what I've done to be able to support a remote display that's on the, um, um, the, the Raspberry Pi is I've hooked a I2C line between this STM32F411 and this uh, ESP32, uh, which does have Wi-Fi. So uh, the data that I am working with for the, uh, to control the drones and anything else is, is uh, being passed over to the ESP32, and that data uh, is then uh, via Wi-Fi goes to the uh, Raspberry Pi. And the Raspberry Pi is a uh, Wi-Fi uh, access point, so it acts as a server, and uh, it uh, it really doesn't uh, do anything except uh, gets the data from the uh, drone and displays it on these uh, uh, five uh, displays uh, using a uh, a uh, I2C multiplexer, uh, mainly because these. Uh, uh, five displays have the same address, and you can have uh, devices with the same address on on a I2C line, and and they're all controlled to this uh, via I2C. Um, what I'm going to do now is uh, I'm going to uh, plug in the uh, Raspberry Pi and show you the initial uh, state of these displays, and then continue from then. Uh, after the, the uh, Raspberry Pi comes up. 
The Raspberry Pi is uh, now up and the uh, Wi-Fi access point server is waiting for a connection. You can see the uh, messages on the uh, first two displays. When I turn the uh, power on to the drone, it will connect to the uh, server and you can see that the, uh, the there is a uh, client connected message on the second display. Turning on the power causes the bottom plate of the frame uh, to act as a power distribution board and it will power the four ESCs that power the motor as, as well as produce uh, five volts on uh, each BEC. I use the uh, five volts uh, to uh, power the components on the breadboard. At the BEC connection, there is a white signal wire that the STM32F411 uh, uses uh, to communicate to the ESCs to control the uh, speeds of the motor. The client is connected, but there is no data uh, coming from the transmitter as uh, it has not been turned on yet. Turning on the transmitter puts the drone uh, into uh, what I call uh, drone mode. Uh, if the S1 and S2 knobs are turned all the way counterclockwise, um, I use the uh, transmitter uh, um, S1 and S2 knobs to dial up different functions that I want to use, such as uh, I have a motor test to test each motor. Uh, the uh, sensor, the BNO055, uh, I, I do some checks on uh, the uh, uh, different sensors there. And uh, I, I get the uh, gimbal uh, raw values so that I can uh, uh, map those into uh, the uh, normal uh, 1000 and 2000. There's other functions I, uh, I can do also that I'm going to also add to uh, as I continue with this project. But on this display, you can see uh, uh, two columns of data. The left column is the uh, left gimbal and the right column is the uh, right gimbal. The, uh, the top value is the uh, uh, throttle. So, uh, oh, so I can move the throttle back and forth and you can see the values changing. And the bottom uh, uh, left column is the rudder and if I move it over you'll see that the values there change. Uh, notice that the propellers did not move and that's because if I uh, uh, this uh, uh, switch uh, the uh, the uh, D switch over here if I hit it one time one click it's a three-way switch so if I click it one time you get this little set notice which makes these gimbal values no longer the raw values, but they're using the uh, limits mapped into the 1000, 2000 range. Um, at the same time, when I did the set, you see the motor values pop up. Uh, this will show the uh, values going to the motor since they are different than the gimbals uh, based upon whether you're in a uh, yaw or a, or a pitch or a roll. Uh, different values will be here uh, that are additive to the throttle. Now, just to give you an idea of, uh, okay, I'm gonna change the uh, D switch over here uh, from a set to a, uh, a set to an arm. And at that point, if I use the throttle, the blades will move. So I wanna make sure that I'm not in the range. Uh, just move this over here, okay. So that uh, does move them, and you can see on the uh, uh, motor values over here that they do change as the motors change. Now, um, I, I started to put in the uh, yaw, pitch, and roll uh, with extremes, way extremes. So I'll give you an idea. Um, on the uh, you, if I if I take the rudder one way, uh, you'll see that. In this case, the uh, two and uh, three uh, fan, uh, uh, motors are going uh, and the other two slow down. And uh, normally it would be a smaller percentage than using the max as this. But if I go the other way, you'll see the other two do that. And, uh, you know, uh, I, I will have the same kind of effects uh, for the pitch with the bottom 
two motors versus the upper two or the roll with uh, these two versus those two, depending upon which way I'm going. Um, oh, the other thing, uh, let me just show you over here. I'm going to flip that back off and uh, uh, change this from a drone mode to a, there. Uh, I'm going to, I'm going to be able to just turn on an individual motor. If I, if I flip this first switch, that will uh, turn the uh, one motor on. If, okay, so I've got that flipped and see that's one. So if I turn that off and turn this on, I'll get the uh, motor two, turn that off and turn this on. I'll get motor three down here and turn that off, turn this on, and uh, I'll get this mode, I'm gonna get my finger out of there. There. So that gives you some idea that I do have some other capabilities. And then um, I, I could, uh, I, if, you know, I have maintenance functions too. So if, if I flip this uh, A knob a little bit more, you'll see that I go into uh, a maintenance mode where I can get the um, gimbal limits. And anyway, I use the S1 and S2 to dial up different functions and uh, based upon the function, the switches uh, are, are, are used differently. Anyway, that's the way I'm using the uh, switches uh, to, to control the uh, drone and get different information on the display. Well, I was just uh, reviewing uh, that last clip and I noticed that the images on the displays are not that good. It's just very difficult to show all the things I need to show and, and also get a clear image on the display. So I apologize for that. Um, uh, but uh, if, if you come in too close, um, well, it looks pretty good, but if you come in too close, you get a blurry image and further away, that would be good, but I can't show anything else. Okay. A few other things I want to uh, discuss before uh, I end this uh, video, and that is uh, the um, uh, the the uh, receiver right here. When I turned on the uh, power, um, you notice that the receiver has a little red flashing light, and that says it's not connected to the uh, transmitter. So when I come over to the transmitter and I turn it on, um, you'll notice when I select the right receiver, it turns green. Now what's happening here is that the receiver receives the data from the transmitter, and uh, it only has an S bus, that's a single line. But uh, I need to be able to look at a lot of data, and I find that the S bus software that's uh, available on the Adreno IDE uh, it has different versions which uh, complicates things. So what I've done is I've used this SBUS decoder, taking the SBUS data um, into the um, uh, SBUS decoder, which generates, uh, which uh, splits it up up to 16 lines of data. And those 16 lines uh, go in to the uh, STM32F411 as 16 wires. I'm only using 11 now, but I plan to use the rest of them also. So what's happening is the data comes in uh, as SBUS goes to the SBUS decoder and then to the STM32F411. And that's how all the switches and everything are processed. Another thing uh, I wanted to mention is I'm using a lot of pins on the STM32F411 so that um, I wanted to uh, be able to have this micro SD uh, adapter attached to that, but since it requires four pins uh, for the protocol that it uses, as opposed to I2C, which only requires two, I decided to hook the micro SD adapter to the ESP32. And uh, that way, any of the data that's needed to be recorded, such as the uh, raw gimbal data, uh, uh, from the, uh, that's a little blurry, uh, from the uh, STM32F411 
uh, wh what I do is I take that data to the ESP32 and it writes it out to the uh, uh, micro SD. So at startup where I need to be able to pick up those records, uh, the ESP32 reads the uh, micro SD and then sends the data to the um, uh, STM32 F411. Okay, one other thing is over here is the BNO055. Now that's a, a sensor uh, that has Actually, it's three sensors. It has an accelerometer, a magnetometer, and a gyroscope. Uh, and and uh, uh, it's going to pass the data. It's not working right now, but it's going to be passing the data over to the uh, STM32F411. Um, now, what the, the reason for this is when you have the motors sending the drone to a point in, in space or in the air, uh, space, I guess, uh, uh, it, it, you have enough power to get it to that point. But don't forget, there's other uh, effects on that point, such as uh, gravity and uh, there's wind. So you have to have some effect, some way of sensing where the uh, 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 drone is, not just getting it to a point, but making sure where it is and what uh, other effects are on it. And this uh, sensor will give you that kind of information. Okay, I think I have talked about all the components. Okay, well, <laughs> unless you want to look at this little switch, and I, I, I find it very difficult to uh, plug these things in, um, the XT60s, and, and uh, so I just use a little switch between them. Uh, well, I had mentioned earlier that uh, I'm going to try to uh, put some robotic uh, uh, function on this drone. I'm not really interested in any kind of racing drones that uh, uh, you build, uh, but uh, this one I really want to have some sort of capability of doing something with it. So if I had a grabber, uh, let me uh, use this uh, uh, wrench as, as an idea. Uh, I have it flat up against the bottom of the uh, drone, and then with a servo, I can move it down and then, of course, as part of the grabber, it has another servo that allows it to close and grab something and then take it up and, and move it someplace else and then open up and, and just uh, put it down. So that would be one robotic type function that I can add to this drone. Anyway, that's what I'm hoping to do. At some point, I may find that what I am trying to do is beyond the capabilities of uh, the components uh, that I'm working with. But uh, that is part of the fun of getting an understanding of how things work in, instead of just buying something off the shelf that has uh, been designed for you. Thanks for watching and I um, uh, hope you enjoyed this uh, video.